Hello guys, this is an update video on installing Chromos on Xen Client. I already posted a video in which I uh, demonstrated how to use Chromos on Xen Client. So this is the detailed how-to. First of all, you need a computer, a second computer with WinSCP running on it. I already prepared my connection to this machine. So uh, to find the IP address, you just have to connect to your network and have to click on the network and there you will find your Wi-Fi or your wired network and underneath you can find connection information in this field connection information you can see your IP address in my case it's the dot nine and I connect on my PC now through WinSCP so why do I do this through a second computer and not to one of my virtual machines because the performance of those virtual machines is not as good as if you are connecting through a second computer. I think this is also because of the same hard disk you are reading and writing at the same time and maybe also because of the overhead from the uh, para-virtualized drivers and so on and so on. So I don't know exactly why this is uh, happening but it is the way. So on my computer now I have on the left side my local drive and on the right side the Xen clients drive. On the Xen clients drive, I just zoom this a little that you can see the, the folder names, just a second. Boop. So if you go to the root directory you will find a folder which is called storage. In storage you will find this folder called ISOs or ISOs, I don't know how to pronounce it correct. And in here you have to put your Chromos ISO. I already did this, I copied it here. The important thing, you have to do it in lowercase, in small letters. Otherwise the Xen Client will not find the, the correct ISO or will not show up. After you have done this, you can swap back to your computer, to your Xen Client, and click in the top left edge on Add Virtual Machine and you have to click Install from Disk. You will get this uh, create screen where you get asked for the virtual machine type. The type is Ubuntu, which is experimental, and you have to give it a name, for example, Chrome. You can choose one of those icons. There is also a way to change these icons and to change the graphics. Uh, I think I will post a follow up also on this. Next. So here you can put in your information for megabytes of RAM and for the vCPU. The best thing for these Linux machines is to start out with one vCPU. The memory you can just configure as you want. I chose two gigabytes in my machine. Uh, I do it now with one gigabyte. Click on next. The virtual disk size, if you just use the live CD, you can leave it for five gigabyte or one gigabyte or you can also leave it even 80 gigabytes. It's a dynamic disk, it's not allocated at the finish or if you create this machine. So you can just leave it at 80 gigabytes. Next. And this is not the important thing. Don't start with the machine. You have to click create with the machine and install us later. Finish. And now your machine is created. After this, you will find the new virtual machine. I didn't choose any other uh, picture so I've got the uh, XP logo. Now click on details. The details of the virtual machine pop up. Now you want to click on edit. Now you have the possibility to change all the settings and the first thing we want to do is to go to hardware. In hardware you will find tool CD which has now changed, if you don't have a ISO before, to XC tools instead of Xen tools and now you can choose all the different CDs so we choose for example now um, I think I used last time this Chromos Linux which is the download from the Linux site you can find the download link in the details of this video I'm gonna tell you where you can find it and the next thing is you have to go to advanced. In advanced you will find allow OAM installations which will actually if you see expose the host ACPI slick table to the virtual machine to unlock OAM editions of Windows. Um, I had 
problems with the MacOS machines when I did not choose this. Sometimes the, the setup did not work really good. So this was just for the 10.6. So I always choose enable and also always say expose the uh, physical hardware information to the virtual machine. Um, some drivers are installed then for you already and the hardware is recognized better. I also choose here enabled. The other two options you don't need and after this you just have to click on save. So now you can close this dialog and click on start and the important thing is prepare to click uh, press escape on your keyboard because you have to choose so yeah, you have to get to this menu otherwise if you don't do this I just press enter now for for the normal boot and you will see what's gonna happen so the screen is loading the graphics are not shown correct and you see the SUSE logo it's disappearing and now you're stuck you cannot do anything else whatever you press the machine is hung so now you have to press control zero to get out on your virtual machines dom zero to the same client and you have to say force shut off after this you can just start it again and come up with the escape and if you're not sure what you can enter or, or configure you can give him the, the help command but uh, we have to boot the Chromos Linux and we have to give him the, the failsafe configuration so you have now to, to enter failsafe Chrome OS Linux so just have to put the camera on this box now for a second to type this just a second so, Chrome OS Linux Chrome OS Linux so I just typed this you can see failsafe Chrome OS Linux and enter this is just gonna take a second now and voila there is the Chromos so it's open SUSE actually and not Chromos and you have now just booted from the live CD so this is nothing else than a live CD running which is uh, not such a great thing otherwise if you just reboot now everything is gone and there are no changes kept in your virtual machine and you can now keep Google as a default search engine and connect. If you use the live CD you always have to go and to log into your account and to do all those things. This is very annoying if you, have, if you have to connect every time to your account and do the settings every time so you just have to close this and choose live installer. On a computer this live installer works much better so the the, the password he's asking for is actually written down here. It's it's root. I just enter it here and press continue. So this this live installer works much better in a normal computer than on this virtual machine. So you can see now this window. And the last time I started the live CD setup, it took about uh, I guess five or ten minutes until something came up, and I pressed next for a few times and suddenly it popped up so uh, just leave the machine running a little time and then the menu will pop up and you will you can give him the correct information for the installation this is the normal setup which you just have to do you don't have to configure anything else and after the machine has finished the installation the Linux will boot again and then the important thing is to do the software update from uh, from the, the open SUSE. So otherwise maybe your machine won't come up again. I had a problem and it booted not correctly the third time 
So I did the update and since this time I already restarted and booted the machine several times and I had no further problems with this machine. So this is all you have to do to get Chromos on your Xen client. And you can also choose to the to the uh, to swap to the other virtual machines and swap back. It's no problem, you don't have to install any Xen client tools or Xen server tools. So there are also no Xen client tools for this machine uh, because this is a open source and not a Debian package. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any question just post it in the video and subscribe to my channel for other cool videos. See you!